Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar. Today is Tuesday, February 7th. Michael Boutros here with you this morning, guys. We just got the release of trade balance figures in the United States. Negative 44.3 billion, expecting negative 45.0 or 45 flat. So basically, a little better than expected on trade balance figures. The dollar has been rallying. Um, so it's not enough necessarily to fuel another leg higher, but uh, looking at the index, you're sort of coming into resistance nearby. So we'll go over that in a moment. Uh, good morning to everyone in the room. Carlos, Mike, Conwall, Pete. Uh, great to see everyone here. Uh, the list for today, we'll start off obviously as always with some dollar price action uh, with the dollar index. Dollar CAD is on the menu. Aussie yen, sterling yen, euro yen, all from last night's update. Dollar yen coming in some support. Um, we'll go over euro. Uh, from last week's update, I was involved in a Euro short earlier. I'm kind of uh, kicking myself. I had a limit overnight that took me out at near 107, a little bit ahead of the lows there, but still liking that uh, trade. We'll go over that in a moment. Uh, obviously, the Aussie on the back of the RBA, uh, also shaving off some of those gains as well. And the commodity sector, we'll look at silver, gold, and for Conwall, I'll add nat gas to that as well. Uh, Mike, Euro Yen is on the menu. Sterling Dollar, says Pete, and Saru, both of them want to look at sterling, so we'll take a look at British Pound. Actually, interestingly enough, British Pound is the biggest loser on the session heading into the U.S. Uh, Open. If we look at just the relative performance over the last 24 hours, here's what it looks like. Pound is the biggest loser, down 0.93%. Um, so we'll definitely take a look at sterling. Broadly, I'm looking for some support close by. I do think sterling can move a little lower, but I, uh, I'm looking for some support nearby in the sterling crosses, so we'll take a look at that. Uh, sterling has been a phenomenal setup. That's the one that we've been uh, following since uh, early on Sunday. So we'll cover that early as well. Okay, uh, let's jump right into the charts. Here's what dollar index looks like to open the session. <clears throat> oh, and by the way, might as well, because uh, I'm going to be get getting rid of the terminal here soon. I don't really use it that much. It's kind of noise, but uh, what I want to check out, the interest rate, Fed, Fed fund futures. Uh, June has continued to maintain near 70%. It's a little bit lower at 68.2%, but despite all the chatter that you got on the back of the NFP print, uh, and even all the dollar price action, uh, expectations for interest rate hikes moving forward still are pretty stable. Uh, if anything, I would note a slight upward move in the May expectation of 42%. Um, but largely speaking, the markets are pretty much still expecting the Fed to stay on tap for the first half of the year. Here's what the dollar index looks like. So... Um, where do I start? Here's the dollar index. I guess we could look at the uh, update from last week. This was uh, on the second. We were looking at the dollar index. We were putting in some really nice divergence into these lows. You had a nice trigger break in momentum to the upside. Resistance at 100 spot 13 and 100 spot 34 specifically, that's the monthly open, uh, was sort of the level that we wanted to keep in mind as key near-term resistance. We plowed right through that. We even came to the next target, which is 100 spot 72, is literally caught the high to the pip. Uh, and we're pulling off a little bit here. So I still think the dollar has another leg, okay? Largely speaking, um, going to the daily chart here, I do think you could see a, a, a period of sideways consolidation here. I don't necessarily want to be bullish, but I want to curb my expectations for the bearish side. We've been bearish pretty much since the start of the year. You're making some strong divergence in momentum as it held 40 support, moving higher. Price action still has a little go before you come into any significant resistance, but time to curb your expectations in the dollar. Uh, and that goes for some of the crosses as well, which we'll go over in a moment, which is why if you've noticed for this week, and I feel dirty for saying this, but <laughs> most of the setups have been largely yen-based uh, and in the crosses. I think that's where most of the price action I've been getting involved in. Euro dollars, its own little thing. I think we had a nice little turn last week, still playing that. But dollar is getting uh, to be a little bit tricky for me here. Also keeping in mind that it's a quiet week as far as main, any major event risk for specifically for the U.S. dollar. Um, so with that said, look for the upper parallel, a little bit higher. Again, on the intraday chart. We're still in overbought territory, so this thing still has it in it if he wants to make another leg higher into U.S. trade. 
uh, resistance right under 101. Okay, 100 spot 93 is where I'd start to look for the median line, but just higher is that basic 38.2 retracement of the entire decline off the highs. Um, and that's basically 101, 100 spot 99. Okay, also just here you have that outside reversal, outside hourly reversal close, 100 spot 80. So there's a couple of different levels here where if you're not holding longs, I don't want to be initiating new longs. If you are holding longs, levels of interest for exhaustion, areas of interest for possible uh, a move off in dollar index. Near term, longer term, you know, we did respond to slope support. So even if this thing does dribble down lower, I don't want to get too excited about the short side yet. Questions on the dollar index. Looking for a drift higher, possible exhaustion near slope resistance here. Okay, it's number one. Number two, let's just jump right into dollar CAD. Um, here's what the loony looks like. Okay, and here's what we look like yesterday. So another one that we caught pretty nice. Uh, we've been tracking this one since the start of the week. Uh, Here's the daily chart look like, that purple line that we were following, okay? It did end up being very nice support, and as I showed you in yesterday in the webinar, if you were this on daily effects, on a closed basis, it was spot on, spot on. Uh, the lower parallel of this descending slope, also even catching the, the uh, stretch, hot, stretch lows, rather, did get a couple of days where you probe below, but you had three tags uh, before the rebound. Divergence in momentum, trigger break to the upside. You had a lot to look at here. And dollar cad has been a tough one to call, but again, off this slope, the long side has been fruitful. And we saw that again work out pretty well here. So Rube, you know what? We'll take a look at oil right after this. I'll add that to the list here. You're right. Might as well do it, right? Uh, still looking at resistance, so finally that's starting to pan out. But here's uh, dollar cad with a nice rally. Initial resistance was one uh, 3117. It was a basic 236. You had the 200-day moving average, the 50 line all stacked up. We made it through. Today's close will be paramount. I do think you look for the stretch into 132.50 inevitably on this upside approach. Uh, you have some really nice slope there. The median line comes right off the highs. So first target's out. Second target on the larger scale still is 32.50 on, on a broader resistance region. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Okay. And here's what the intraday chart looked like yesterday. So looking at buy pullbacks, constructive above 130.50, uh, a breach of the highs, you were looking for um, 131.88 into 131.79. And basically, we just probed through that, missed the final target, and this is that key region I still think you want to stretch into. 132.27, 132.50 is what we were looking at on the daily chart. So that's sort of the major resistance I'd be looking for uh, in dollar CAD. As far as dollar CAD is concerned, keep in mind that you do have dollar CAD key data on Friday, specifically with the employment numbers. Expecting to see unemployment hold at 6.9%, a contraction, net employment for the month of 10,000 jobs, and a downward revision. So, fuel further CAD weakness, maybe some more upside on dollar CAD. Who knows? The data will tell. Um, but certainly at this point, uh, we've already taken out that first initial target. On this pullback here, so heading right into the U.S. session, Mike, that's good and dandy. What do I do from here? This is what I'd be looking at from here. Let me clean this chart up for you. We've taken out the 38.2. We've taken out the 50%. So I'm going to go ahead and drop both of those. A couple of things I want to sort of just keep in mind. First thing is I do want to see what an extension looks like off this low. Oh, wow. Okay, probably should have had this on here, but better late than never. 618 extension, literally just caught that high. Excuse me, the 1618 extension. Drop the May high now that we've made it through that. Okay, so in terms of support, 
In terms of support, I put right here, 131.55 heading into the U.S. trade session, backed by 131.18 uh, or so. Bullish invalidation, still going to be down here. Okay, 130.90. I'm going to drop that. I'm going to bring that up from yesterday. So last night's report, bullish invalidation was 130.47. Uh, choke that up to 130.90 at this point, the lower parallels there. And basically, I'd be looking for entry on one of these levels into the U.S. trade session for that final stretch higher. Depending on where we are in time, keep in mind, again, that key event risk on Friday might be uh, a turning point in dollar CAD, but certainly the advance looks constructive in my mind uh, well above 130.90. Also look at that pivot that we made there last week, so a nice area of which you'd expect to see some support. Um, in dollar CAD. 3250 being the key region of which what we need to get through, okay, to really validate a more significant advance. You'd be targeting the 100 day moving average that comes in line right with the 50% retracement here, 13280 or so. And then there's really nothing stopping this from, you know, going much, much higher if we clear that region, but the levels are exceptionally clean. Okay, look for this pullback in dollar CAD. Questions on the loonie? <clears throat> okay, with that in mind, here's what cr uh, crude oil looks like. Here we are. So, I don't really have a really good uh, grasp on the near-term picture, but I really want to just highlight how key of resistance level this has been. Um, I know all of you are sick and tired of seeing this, but I really I can't hammer this home, um, you know, more importantly than I can right now. Uh, as far as crude is 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 concerned, you know, 55, 54, 74 is still critical resistance. This is the weekly chart. Don't forget what we're coming off of. It's welcomed. It's welcomed to see a pullback in crude prices. And you know, I've kind of been waiting for this for a while, hasn't been materializing, but we've just been consolidating below support. Is this gonna be a material break of any type of consolidation range? It could be, it's way too early to tell. Uh, yesterday was not an outside reversal day, but it was a reversal day. Um, and certainly we're making progress here through the monthly open. So it's starting to look um, like it's going to go down the path that we were looking for finally. It's been a slow grinder uh, as far as triggers are concerned. If I can highlight my tool here. You know, you have one there. You're going to want to watch for today and see if we can close below that. Um, but yeah, I'm, a, I'm a, you know, you know, you know where I've been at with crude, right? I've, I've, favored the downside. It's just it hasn't been giving us any technical clarity, uh, I think, for us to actually take a more hardcore approach on it. Um, uh, Conwell saying crude inventories today. No, so, so no, Conwell, so the crude inventories actually come out tomorrow. Uh, today at 10, at 12, you get crude outlook. It's not going to be as important. Um, they basically give me what the outlook is for inventories moving forward, but the actual inventory count comes out tomorrow. So that's typically on Wednesdays. Uh, as far as the near-term picture, let's just go on the fly here uh, for Sarub and Conwall, both who are which tracking crude prices. I don't really, like I said, have a near-term uh, grasp on this, but let's see if we can find something. This is a good drill. You guys like to tend to... Uh, kind of like going through the setups like this. So let's kind of work this level. Six one eight extensions right there. A little too steep. Mm. 
Yeah, I don't really see any structure here that I like working with yet. Hmm. So the 50% retracement off the lows from January is right here at 5250, just lower. Uh, keep in mind that purple line again is the monthly open. So both of which levels of which you could see start to catch a little bit more support as this thing starts to come into oversold conditions. Uh, that being said, you know, I'm under, if you put a gun to my head, I don't have a clear setup here, Sir Rube, but if you put a gun to my head, I would say this, look to maintain a short uh, a bias below the weekly open that would basically be uh, 5380 with 5470 54 uh, 55 still being the broader bearish invalidation you'd need to get through that to get constructive again um, but I'd be looking lower below 5380 near-term targets 5250 52 is the 618 there's a little pivot there on the left if you look in early January uh, that offered some nice support and price action so watch that but this is kind of the breakdown zone right here maybe later in the week, 5150s. That's a 618 extension from the decline off the highs and the 786 retracement from the ascent off the lows. So both of which, if we break down and that trend line support should charge a nice drop, giving you a target uh, well below 50 there. Okay, so this is just a near-term interpretation of price, guys. Take it for what it's worth um, as we continue to see prices drive lower here. Okay, hope that helps. Sarup, Conwell, let me know if you have any specific other questions on crude. Uh, next up on tap is Aussie Yen. Here's what Aussie Yen looks like. This will be number four. <clears throat> so, little messy. Not my favorite setup right now. Uh, I know we've been tracking this one for a while. Uh, Pooja, I don't know if you're involved with Aussie N at this point, but here's what the daily chart looks like. And this is kind of what got me excited uh, last night. You were looking at this thing. It looked like it was continuing to plow lower, obviously. Um, RBA, yada, yada, yada. Here's what it looks like, or here's what it looked like yesterday. Okay. Um, you're looking at well, let me just take a step back. Uh, I think we covered this yesterday, but just in case we didn't, Aussie Yen on the weekly chart, talking about the divergence that we've been seeing in, in, in weekly momentum, which is much more significant, and really the, the need for a break lower below these lows that we've been making for the last couple of weeks. You have the 50 line there, nice resistance um, to charge that larger correction uh, for a broader base earlier in the year. Okay, we are looking to stay constructive in Aussie end, broadly speaking. But early in the year, we we're citing our expectations for a new new position to move lower. No open positions yet, but tracking for short, says Pooja. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, and I don't blame you. Here's what it looks like on the daily chart. Okay, got yeah, a nice little gap lower at the open. You filled the gap, moved lower into support, and you closed yesterday what looked like, it was hairy, but it what looked like right below the lower parallel. Now, I recognize that we've closed below this lower parallel before, but, um, you know, the median line has been pretty nice. Um, if you took a same slope off that high from back here in August, it literally caught to the pip the December high. So there's a lot to look at here. Um, and I'm looking for, what's the word, conviction. I'm looking for evidence uh, that this break is going to be legit, and I think we'll get that here today. Whether it is going to be legit or not, I don't know, but we'll get that here today. Here's what it looks like on the intraday. And here's what it looked like last night. So we were citing that expectation right there, 85.55, that we could get a support bounce from there, bearish invalidation, still 85, uh, 86.51. I'm going to go ahead and bring that down at this point. 
um, shortly to the weekly open, but we're still sitting at that support zone. What I did like, Pooja, and what was an opportunity yesterday uh, was this rally, okay, right into that parallel. Perfect tag and hold. It was too clean to believe. Woke up this morning, I was just staring at it. <laughs> um, but this is basically the range I'm focused on heading into the U.S. Open. Okay, 85.55 or so, 85.50 is support. Last night's high, basically, as resistance, it's 85.90. Looking for, uh, you know, a consolidation break of this zone, favoring a downside move. Uh, but certainly, that's the zone that's in focus uh, for now. 86 into 86.30, says Pooja. That's what you're looking for is resistance. So, 86.30 is the weekly open. I'm 100% with you, Pooja. We're right on the same page. Uh, that's going to, I'm going to denote that in your term as my bearish invalidation level. I'm going to want to see price hold below that. If we start making progress through the weekly open again, um, you're basically just expecting a move into 86.50 at that point. So there's no point in trying to even fade that or, or trying to get involved in that range. Um, but yeah, that's sort of a sweet spot for me, even ahead of 86. This might be, you know, something that's really lasting. Look how much play we've gotten off that one slope. Resistance, resistance, break, gave us a run. Support, break, gave us a run. A little consolidation, but instant support. Break, gave us a run. Resistance, watch for a reaction at that level. And you could see, I mean, there's that slope that we were looking at in the daily chart. I mean, what do, you, what do you do with that? That's that's the market being indecisive. And you want to be very careful when it starts doing that around. Remember what we always want to say. When, when we see a break of these confluence support or resistance regions, typically I want to see a run. I don't want to see this. Uh, I want to see the market react, you know, a little bit more fervor, just like we did here when we broke, right? Saw that definitive run. Just like here when we broke, definitive breakdown. This is not what you want to see. So look for that consolidation break. I do like the short side still below 86.30. Move lower, looks for 85. 84, 83 at this point, I'll just have a soft target, but uh, 84.45 uh, is where the 786 retracement converges on that lower parallel. All right, so that's sort of my thought process here moving forward with uh, Aussie Yen. We'll see if we can't get any play off that. Again, the economic docket for Australia is pretty quiet for the rest of the week as far as I can remember. Yeah, we got nothing on tap. Questions on Aussie Yen? Going once. Put a button on that one. All right. Uh, sterling yen and euro yen, here are the yen crosses that were um, of more interest. I just wanted to highlight this, obviously, because we, we were heading into the RBA, and I uh, wanted to make sure you guys had a, a Aussie cross you could work with. I think it was still cleaner, despite how ugly this is from a structural standpoint. I still think this is cleaner from Aussie yen, uh, from Aussie dollar. Not a big fan of Aussie dollar right now, uh, but we will take a look at that in a moment. As far as uh, sterling yen and euro yen, just sticking with the yen crosses, we were looking for the turn lower, ideally for a rally to get short early in the week. Didn't really get it, but the breakdowns continue to take down all our targets. So, um, you know, get in where you can. If you have been getting trouble trying to get into this one, I don't blame you. It's been a runaway trade. Uh, but at least we're on the right track here as far as the directional bias and the levels are concerned. Just missed that downside target in overnight trade. Uh, 138.50, what was it? The actual low, let me just not round, uh, was one. 38.54, um, we had 138.41, which is a 7.64 retracement, and you also have slope there. That's just basic trend line resistance off the highs. So a little bit of a turn right before that. Uh, you want to go ahead and continue to favor the short side from here, but I do think you can get a, you can get a, a rebound first. So uh, 39.84 would be initial resistance. Uh, again, the weekly open, obviously. But as long as we stay below the weekly open, still think uh, you want to respect the downside here. I'm mindful of the daily chart here on pound yen, guys, and where we are just broadly speaking. Uh, this is going to be the fourth consecutive day of declines in the last, uh, what, seven days. We've only had one up day. 
So you could see a, a kind of a mean reversion trade back to test that 200-day moving average that would take you right back into 140 again. So watch for a little bit of a kickback before we move lower. That being said, it's pound yen. You know what I mean? Once this thing chooses a direction, it could just keep going. So a hard one to intraday trade, but risk is still for broadly a move lower uh, back towards that key region of support, which is down here. January low day close, 100 day moving average, 50% retracement. This is the 618 line, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Of that top side formation. So that's right here. So again, drop that uh, bearish invalidation level from the monthly open to the weekly open. Also keep in mind, guys, the weekly open actually converges really nicely on that uh, low that we made last week, that swing low that we made on the 31st. So right around 140, uh, 45. Weekly open comes in right around 140, 38. Questions on pound yen? Number six, Euro Yen, uh, looks like this. So that breakdown came through a ridiculous region of, of support. Um, I know you guys caught this because we talked about it on Sunday's update. We said, look for reaction at this level this week. I didn't think it was going to come on a Monday, but nonetheless, here we are. Uh, that level was defined by 120.96 into 121.13, a 618 extension, a 236 longer term retracement, slope support and the swing lows from um, uh, last week. So that being said, we've made it through. We made a convincing close well below support, which really can uh, gives us a conviction short bias. And it now invalidates the initial yearly opening range, right? We came, we made a January. A lot of times you'll hear it be the January open. Um, same thing uh, as the yearly opening range initially. So Make a high, make a low, you try to test that high, you even fail at the yearly open and start to collapse. Once we break these lows, keeps that short bias in focus while below basically 121.11, 121.13. Uh, on a daily chart basis, there's really nothing to be too crazy about as far as looking for support until 119. That's just a basic 38.2. It's not just a reason to be support. More so 118.46 is where it gets interesting. You get the 100-day moving average. You got the swing highs from back here in July of last year. You got the swing lows from back here in November, late November of last year. And those all converge right down here. So both of which, areas of which I'd start to look for longer term support. Until that happens, you want to stay bearish below 129. Now I know, or 121 rather. I know that doesn't help from here, Mike. That's 100 pips away. Well, it's Euro Yen. You have the ATR for it. So uh, don't be too surprised to see some near term recovery longer term, you'd be looking to sell rallies while below that region. Here's what the intraday chart looks like. Now, I presented this slope to you yesterday. Um, actually, was this slope on the previous update? Yeah, we presented this slope to you yesterday. Um, and there's the pivot below that 50 line, which is making me like, <clears throat> excuse me, making me like this even more. Um, so next downside target obviously got taken out, which was 119.75, and you're seeing a little bit of a rebound there. That's a 100% extension from the decline off the highs, from the highs. So two equal legs down could give you a pop higher, okay? Could give you a pop higher. You did have some building divergence into that low. That's why I'm saying look for that rebound. Even if you get into 121, you want to drop that bearish invalidation down to that 121 level. Even if you get into 121, structurally, you'd be at the median line, which would be a nice area for this thing to find resistance. Um, also, you have basic trend line resistance off the highs for the year so far. I'm lying. That's just the late January high. Um, but you get the picture. So look for some possible recovery here. Wouldn't be too surprised. The end's been a little bit of a, a, of a runaway as of late. 
but I'd be looking to sell those rallies, inevitably looking for that move down to 119. Like I said, a basic 38.2 also converges on the lower parallel of this near-term slope. Uh, in time, that doesn't happen till uh, Thursday, okay, uh, into U.S. trade here. So keep that in mind. The levels all line up pretty darn well. That's this region right here, initial target support. And again, below that, you start to look at 118.46, that pivot zone alongside that 100-day moving average. Questions on Euro-Yen? Michael says beautiful. Yeah, I agree. Of all the of all the yen crosses, uh, who knew euro yen would be the cleanest? Especially after that chop that we got into the close of last week, that was annoying. Uh, we were just kind of sitting at that major key support, looking for reaction, looking for reaction. That's the type of reaction you want to get, though. Okay, that's believable, and that's the kind of break and the run uh, that gives you the validation again uh, to continue to favor that downside. Yeah, there's really nothing to catch about that. I'm not really not too concerned about it. Uh, also, one of the reasons that I continue to favor the euro short in general, um, let's see if we can get re-entry on that one, but euro-yen looks pretty good. Questions on euro-yen. Going once, going twice, that's number six. Number seven, I don't really want to get too involved, but dollar-yen, I do have to highlight that we did see an initial response to that key support. Uh, we've been following this one on a daily basis. I've been just throwing you the daily chart just because, again, I don't really intraday trade this, but if we're going to find support in dollar yen, this is the zone you want to do it. We were talking about it since way last month. You know, I said, kept on saying, only wake me up if this thing comes into 111.35 slash 80 or if we're at 116. Well, someone woke me up yesterday because we were at 111.35 slash 80. So I'm awake now, okay, with dollar yen. Um, Looking for signs of exhaustion, I wouldn't put it past this thing just to completely screw everyone to make one last low into this key pocket zone support. Uh, but broadly speaking, I'm looking for signs of exha exhaustion. And I do think um, heading into the latter part of this week, the risk is uh, for you to start to make a base here and start to make a rebound. So either that or similar to what we saw in Euro Yen, if this thing breaks up 135 below this lower parallel, you know, you'd expect to see this thing just to completely spill. So you're coming up on long-term upslope support, i.e. bullish invalidation. Okay, and I want to see that hold as support if this thing is going to continue to hold within the confines of this formation that we're in. So, again, I'm not currently trading this as far as where the dollar index is trading. As we said before, it's still have a little room for the upside. So, yeah, if you put a gun to my head, I would say buy dips, but... You know, I don't really have a setup per se for us to get involved in here. Also note that you did see some divergence into those lows, further fueling uh, the suspicion of a correction. Still got a very clear topside trigger, which has not given out yet. And we'll want to see that invalidated on a uh, closed basis. Initial resistance, look for the monthly open. That comes in right around here. Let me give you the exact number, uh, 112.79. Let's call it 112.80 uh, is the monthly open. Obviously, the weekly op the monthly excuse me, opening range high, 113.95 is resistance. All right, so there's the abomination for you. Take it for what it's worth. <laughs> uh, nothing really I'm interested in intraday trading per se, but the indications are starting to direct us higher. Okay, here's what the intraday chart looks like, again, for what it's worth. You're seeing even divergence here. Kind of love to see a washout. Uh, I don't really think, you know, you have any pertinent data that could kind of prompt that. Um, even on the U.S. side, you have just University of Michigan preliminary numbers. That's not till Friday. But near-term resistance, weekly open right here, monthly open right here, 1280, let's call it. And if we turn, let me adjust that retracement. There we go. Uh, very basic, nothing too, nothing too fancy here. If we turn, um, you know, you'd want to use these retracement targets as a little bit more hard, as hard targets for this thing. 
So that would give you 113.25. Uh, by the way, if we do clear the, the weekly um, or the monthly open, excuse me, at that 112.80 level, guys, that would also constitute an objective break of the weekly opening range, and that would also be bullish. So such a move, you'd look for 113.25, you'd look for basic trend line resistance, um, and I would put a little bit more of a, a key near-term resistance level just from slope uh, and Fibonacci right here, around 114.25. Not too far off from um, where we opened in December, actually. Dollar yen. That was number seven. All right, let's get into um, the juicy stuff. Here's Euro number eight. A lot of commotions being made about what's going on on that front. Um, so we covered Euro back on the second. Here's what we were looking at. Oh, wrong report. With Euro dollar. Uh, it was coming into that 102, 108.20 barrier, major key resistance, 50% retracement. It was also a nice swing low, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, that's this region right here. Okay, this is a swing low from, what is that, March of last year. And vulnerable for a turnaround, right, as momentum was holding solid resistance at 60. Long story short, you got the turn. The support structure that broke yesterday kept the downside bias in focus, and that was 107. Um, as I said, that's kind of where I got out on the shorts. Again, we obviously kept going in overnight trade. Here's the lower parallel. And that's why right now, immediately, I'm, um, I'm concerned about any fresh new short exposure. If you're holding shorts, momentum hasn't given you anything to get shaken out of just yet. In fact, when you get a stretch like this, if it's not going to be a sharp rebound, you're probably going to dribble lower. Um, but if you're looking for fresh new exposure, do keep in mind that you are coming in some near-term support here. Okay, so curb your expectations from these levels. You want to stay bearish sub 107.25. Um, that's sort of where if things get beyond this level again, I would sort of shake my opinion of what's going on. Um, but certainly, you know, you are coming in some near-term support. And this was the final target that we cited back uh, on the second early in the month. So 106.42, coming up on tap here. Uh, obviously, in time we've moved. You're testing that lower parallel right now, but that's the next downside target and something a little bit more critical to pay attention to in euro dollar. I sat in this trade for all day yesterday. It seemed like forever uh, for a guy like me. I was a little heavy, more heavily leveraged than I should have been, but... Um, I was looking, you know, for a continuation of the break. Here's the limit got taken out last night. Again, um, keep in mind the ATR for this is still only about 22 pips, by the way, guys. You know, you've been seeing a lot of bigger uh, moves, but the daily average true range is still only about a hand, you know, quarter. Um, so nothing too, nothing too crazy. That being said, watch the short side here. I'm a little weary. If you get a stab into 106.42, is that a good long entry repeat saying? You know, I could be looking for some exhaustion there. Um, it's a counter trend trade, Pete. If anything, yeah, it might be actually a good exhaustion long position to take on a scalp basis, but I'd want to use half leverage or maybe even a third leverage just because um, my limit, let, let me take a step back. In such a scenario, Pete, I guess this is a good question. A lot of people ask uh, these types of scenarios. Um, yeah, if you get a stab into here with some divergence and momentum and you get a long trigger, yeah, that, that would be a decent long trade, but uh, you want to make sure that your first initial targets are only the bottom of that lower parallel. I wouldn't start targeting 107.25 or anything. The first targets would just be the bottom of the parallel because if this is break, zoom, and retest, that's where you would find initial resistance. So a lot of times what people will do is they'll take that long and then they'll, they'll get all excited once it gets to that region. Once it starts failing, they start to freak out. They never get out and all of a sudden they're underwater when that's not how we're near-term trading. If we're near-term trading, you get a bounce off this region, you should be doing something as soon as you get back into resistance. Because if it is a zoom and retest, this is what would hold as resistance before resumption of the broader down trade. Pete, does that make sense? Good question. You're at downtrend support, so if you get a rebound, yeah, I'm all, I'm all about it. I can trade counter trend all day long, but nimble is the name of the game, 
And as soon as you get back into former structural support, you gotta you gotta do something. You gotta clean up that book before the next move because if it does continue, uh, you don't want to get caught on the wrong side. Uh, cheers, Pete, Gary. Hey, great to see you in the room, sir. Uh, so, any questions here on euro? As far as current, you know, current levels are concerned. Nothing to get too excited about. But I expect I would expect to see a nice little recovery, at least in your term, and see if I can't get back on the short side. Uh, like I said, if you're holding shorts, look at that drop in the 104, 64, uh, 106.42 might be that really sweet spot, I think, uh, for Euro. Uh, sorry, late to the room. Have you covered the abomination yet? You said to wake up. Uh, <laughs> that's so great, Gary. They just said that. He said, sorry, late to the room. Have you covered the abomination yet? You said you uh, to wake you up when the abomination reaches 111.30 or so. Right, yeah, I'm awake, Gary. Um, we're here. So, yeah, we did go over it. I'll post this as soon as we're done. Uh, I don't want to go over it again for everyone in the room, but just a quick recap. Uh, you know, look for possible rebound off this region. Absolutely. Now, the weekly opening range is set below the monthly open, and I said if we break below, above the monthly open, that's what would give me the mark, at least for a near-term reversal to the upside. Till that happens, um, yeah, you're looking for exhaustion. Wouldn't be looking to get too aggressive on any short exposure for, from here on dollar yen. Um, Aussie dollar, number nine. Well, any questions on euro before we move off? Final questions. Um, <laughs> cheers, Gary. Okay. Uh, let's jump into Aussie, okay, and then we'll jump into the sterling. I know there's a lot of questions on cable as well. Um, cable actually, again, like I said earlier, is the worst performer so far in the U.S. trade or coming into the U.S. trade se session versus the dollar. But here's Aussie. Is this finally reversing? I don't know. Um, you know, as far as Aussie's concerned, if you guys remember yesterday, I was saying is similar to dollar yen in that. Wake me up if this thing hits 77.35 or if it breaks back below 75.77. Uh, I guess we're kind of mid-range reversing here. So I just don't like it. I just don't like it. And there's a reason that you haven't seen me really been highlighting Aussie dollar, even heading into the RBA. The only thing I had up here was the August high day close, which offered a decent pivot before. We didn't quite get that high. Um, it's too sharp of an advance to have any type of decent structure to be you know, confident of, at least, in my humble opinion. I guess that's what I would highlight as major key near-term support. You have the monthly open there, okay? Um, the high day close from last month. Former structural resistance, if you want to call this structural resistance. Uh, this is a three-point touch trend line, four-point touch trend line support, so that's going to be something I'm going to pay attention to. Um, you know, 75.80, initial area of support. I mean, you didn't even get divergence into these highs. So, you know, I'm of the mindset of this is actually pretty strong support. Might be a nice launching spot for the next high. Uh, if we break below this, would shift my opinion, but... what the near-term picture looks like. Hold on one sec. Yeah, it's also the 236 retracement. Yeah, so watch that pocket, 75.70 into the monthly open, which takes in 
uh, a nice zone right there of which I'd be looking for a little bit more support. Once we get some structure to the decline, I'll be a lot more comfortable. Uh, but as it stands right now, you know, I guess, again, if you had to put a gun to my head, I'd say sell uh, rallies. But is it have it in it to get that last stretch into 77.35? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Um, so, again, a trade that we don't have too much conviction on, but those are the levels I'd be, I'd be following if I had felt compelled to trade the Aussie dollar. So I just wanted to give you a quick update on that uh, from earlier in the week and on the back of the RBA. Moving right along, British pound, something a little bit more interesting. Here's the sterling moving forward uh, as we get into the U.S. trade session. Just came off a of support at 123.46, and I think, again, here you want to be mindful of a support rebound in, this, in, in British pound, both on long-term and near-term. Here's the daily chart. And here is the most recent British pound update. So um, this is back from the second. So we haven't really necessarily seen that. I didn't put the, uh, the new structure on here yet. Obviously, that's been added just recently. But the daily chart, OK? What we've basically done is done, we've held that resistance at 126.75, reversed, and we've come right into this support pocket right here. You have the 50 line, which was a very nice pivot. Literally almost caught the low to the pip. And then you have this, this, this uh, key pivot zone right here, which is 123.80, a 50% retracement of that decline from the December highs, and the 2016 low day close. Okay, nice little pivot zone. So for Sterling, today's close is going to be important, specifically if we're able to hold above that 50 line. I am looking for basing. I'm looking for exhaustion. I'm looking for possibly resumption back on the upside. That would give us uh, sort of a near-term bias to move for one last high in the DXY before that starts to pull back, giving us an upside approach here in, in pound. Um, that being said, here's what the intraday chart looks like now. Okay, we talked about this yesterday, this slope, how it wasn't, so much of a big fan about it, just because we were just pivoting around the median line, not really doing much. Here's the 50 line, catching the lows, the current operative advance, we talked about that on the daily chart, catching the lows, 50% retracement of the advance, boom, nice hold at uh, uh, 30 in momentum. So instant or immediate resistance, not instant, immediate resistance takes you back into 124.33, again, that same pivot zone that we were talking about, 2016, low day close, and a breach above this would give us a little bit more of a constructive bounce. Okay, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, but this is a big region. You're at downslope support and upslope support. So if you're going to get a rebound, you'd want to see near term price hold above 123.46. Questions on Sterling. This is make or break, at least for the near term, the picture. Okay. Also keep in mind, oh, that's disgusting. This is also the yearly open. Can't get more critical than that. See if we can't get some steam on the upside here. You gotta get through 2433 before you get excited. What are the upside targets for Sterling to Sarub? So initially 2433, okay? Um, then you'd look for the weekly open Weekly open comes in right here around 124.80. Keep in mind that comes in line with the 50 line in a couple of days or tomorrow, basically. Um, so it would be first 24.33. The weekly open would take you into 20, uh, uh, 24.80. And then obviously that 618 is wrong. It's too early to know if this is a low, but such a scenario. Oh, wow, those levels are sexy. Wow. So 38.2 would be the 38.2 retracement and the weekly open at 24.80. I wouldn't even mind the 50. And I'd say the 618 would be your final target to the upside right there at 25.68. Okay. In a scenario where Sterling breaks down, 
let's say this thing completely collapsed and dollar just rips face, right? And you break below 2346 uh, here, 2350. There's, you know, really nothing on tap into the lower parallel. So I'd be looking for a move near 2250. I'd be looking for this parallel here near 2220 uh, would be sort of downside targets I'd be looking for uh, for on a downside break. I don't think it's going to be a slow decline. If it breaks 2346, I do think it's going to be an accelerated um, an accelerated move. You know, it's going to be something that goes not necessarily a wall like this, but it's going to be something that that'll give this thing some breadth. So watch for a key near-term support 2346. Any long exposure you take should be uh, broadly against that near-term support zone. So, Rube, does that help? I'm liking the pound. I'm liking the pound. We need to see a reaction down here today. And again, guys, don't forget, you can always take a snapshot of any of these charts. So if you need to, um, you know, go ahead and click on that camera button and take a snapshot of these if you need to refer to these levels uh, later on. Do we have a trigger for the sterling, says uh, Mike. Let's check it out. Not on the five, no, not yet. Let's see if the US Open gives us anything. I mean, you could throw a trigger on that, but those are typically my least favorite. Uh, because you're not using the high in price, right? The high in price actually is on this. So this is actually a divergent signal for a near-term pullback. Um, so I wouldn't want to use a trigger off that. If this was the high in price and this was a secondary high, like it is in the momentum signature, then that would be a viable trigger. But using triggers off divergent signals, you know, while I have seen them work, I think it's just luck. It's not necessarily part of the strategy. So uh, no, I don't necessarily see a near-term trigger on this. Not yet. Yeah, you're more than welcome, man. Okay, let's take a quick segue into the commodity block. If there are any other questions or trade setups you guys want to review, uh, feel free to drop them on the message board now. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what the commodity is doing. So, gold. Um, this thing just doesn't want to stop. Is ripping people's faces off on this rally, I'm sure. Uh, so, yesterday we were talking about this thing. We were coming into a longer-term trendline support. I don't want to go back and get all up into that, but... Obviously, we pushed through that and closed above it. The pullback, you basically want to look for near-term support near 1225. I still think it stretches into 1240, 1248, both of which are now your near to your, your key near top side targets. Try saying that three times fast um, for gold. Uh, basic slope support, nothing fancy. Uh, 1618 extension off the low. This is a 50% retracement off the highs, as basic as you can get. But you also have some slope in that region as well. So is today's sort of pullback, is that the start of something, Mike? I don't want to necessarily make that assumption. Uh, it's very uh, rare that you'll see candles close at the highs and then just kind of reverse and base off it. Typically, you want to see sort of an emotional last stretch or fight uh, in prices as the bulls try to challenge that one last stretch. So you don't really see too many closes at the highs and a reversal. So no, I'm of the mindset that you do make a new high here, but is that a tradable setup? Um, you know, that's that key region, 1248. Just ahead of that 1240 would be that uh, 618 extension. I guess I can add that on the intraday. This region, both areas of interest for exhaustion. Uh, as far as what we would need to clear as support near term, um, it would have to be the weekly open. There's your weekly open, a basic 38.2, uh, former highs, all that converges on basic slope support right around one, what is that, 12.18, 12.20. Oddly enough, that was the key resistance range we talked about all last month, right here. So I think the levels are still pretty clear on gold. The question is, do you, do you fight this rally here or do you try to play it for one last exhaustion high stretch to the upside? I'd rather be looking for that last stretch high to the upside to fade um, just on account of the strength of the rally that we've seen and on account of where the dollar index is trading as well. But, you know, be careful. Try to stand, try to stand in front of this. Okay. 
silver is the one that's interesting for me. And I know that you're looking at this, and we were talking, chatting about this earlier um, on the message board. Here's what silver looks like. And I wanted to highlight this yesterday just because of the critical region of resistance that we're coming into. Um, that region is defined by a basic 38.2 retracement of the entire decline off the highs that you made back last year. You have the 200-day moving average and a couple of parallels extending off the highs from last year as well, all converging on near-term channel resistance. So all of that stacks up basically into 1286 um, from 1270, uh, excuse me, 1786 from 1773. You have a huge region of resistance right here that we're kind of butting up against right now. Momentum butting up against that region of resistance here. Do you suggest that we sell at 1245 instead of buying at 1220? You're talking about gold? Sell at 1245 uh, instead of buying at 1220. Depends what happens first, Saru. If we collapse from here, no, 1220 I think would be a decent area in which you'd look to play the rebound. Um, if we rally first, yeah, 1245 is where I'd start to look for his exhaustion. Uh, not even 1245. Keep the levels right. It's 1240 and then 1248. Does that make sense, Sarub? It matters what happens first. Uh, a quick look at Kiwi, if possible. Uh, is, a sh it, is it still a short? Excuse me, it got stopped out of my rally in Asia. Okay, Pooja, yeah, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Sarub, you're more than welcome, sir. Uh, so, guys, keep that in mind for gold. Again, not my favorite setup. Silver is, is the one that is favored. Um, again, keeping in mind that key resistance range we're entering on on the daily chart. Here's what the intraday chart looks like real quick, and then Pooja will jump into Kiwi. Um, uh, we just wanted to highlight for silver, uh, we were talking about this, just chatting about it earlier, uh, Conwall. You're marking divergence into these highs. Price action, higher high, the oscillator, lower highs. So, yeah, you're on the hallmarks of, you know, exhaustion. Um, look for another stab higher. Okay, look for that possible stab near 1780 before it starts to collapse. Structure is holding pretty good. A break below the weekly open is what's needed to mark full-on reversal. Um, so. Still could see some more upside. Levels are pretty clear. Take a snapshot of this if you need it, Conwell, as far as the targets I'm looking at uh, near term. But uh, I'm not interested in initiating any new long exposure while below 1788. I'll tell you that much right now. Okay. Uh, jump quickly into, so we went over gold. That was 11. Silver was 12. Uh, I will touch on that gas for you, but let me look at uh, Kiwi here for Pooja. That's number 13 for the session. Here's what Kiwi looks like. Keep in mind, we have the RBNZ still on tap, right back at key support. Pooja, are you sick of this thing or what? <laughs> um, I still think it's a short. I do still think it's a short. But then again, I've been thinking it's a short for since last month. So um, look, today's price action, in all seriousness, today's price action is pretty encouraging to see that long wick. Um, I know it might have stung a lot of you on the rally there and overnight getting stopped out, uh, but the long and short of it is, you know, what we were saying is a possibility of the consolidation faking people out with a break to the downside first, then rallying. Remember how we were talking about that yesterday? So the exact opposite happened. Puja, it faked everyone out on a break side, uh, on a break to the upside, then broke, then faded. So that actually has me looking lower. Uh, but it only has me looking lower while below, let's call it 73.30 again. Seventy three twelve is the weekly open. Uh, I'm looking at Friday's high, 73.28. So, you know, what's interesting is that key pivotal region, and guys, we talked about this for months, um, is 7292, 7296, March 2015, low day close. Okay, and that was a real spike emotional low. And the high day close from back here in July. We've still continued, I know it looks really messy on the daily chart, but on the intraday chart, we've still continued to pivot around that level very, very clean. Okay, and today's decline came right back into that. So look, Long and short of it, if we come into the weekly open and we kind of find resistance right here near 73.12, I'd actually like to, 
to be looking for some exhaustion on the near-term picture. Yeah. But this bounce here has me focused on this region to open up the trade session. So let's say 72.90 uh, into 73.20, 73.30 is the key region of resistance I, or the key range I'd be looking for a break of. Um, let's look at this in a near-term picture, one hour. Oops. Yeah, Mike, 100%. He says, nice, nice candle on the daily chart, but let's see if it, where it closes. I, that's exactly where my mind sets out right now. So here that's a, here's that initial target I was talking about, just as initial resistance. Monthly open comes in at 73.12. Uh, 73.30, Friday's high, uh, is sort of an interesting area as well, that I'd start to look for some resistance. And again, this is an aggressive move, but just let me see what this looks like. Hey, stop traffic. Look where that 50 line is. <whistles> right there. Could be in play. <laughs> and look where that 50 line in the lower bound is. It's just right at our target. So let's let us let us see if this can materialize. I'd like to see st an initial resistance start to hold at 73.20, 73.30. Uh, if we get the final push, remember where we bottomed right here is the exact weekly opening range low. So an objective break sub 72.85, in my humble opinion, um, you know, aside from what anyone says, would be an objective break of the weekly opening range. And I think that would be the validation to look lower. Targets would be 72.35, um, depending on where we are in time. Obviously, that median line confluence comes in at 72, right at the handle. Um, and then 71.60 would be the subsequent target. So it's going to be determined on when we, we see that break or if we see that break uh, below the 73 handle. Questions on Kiwi? Starting to like it. Starting to like it. Let's see if we can't get, I mean, like I said, the initial response here is good. Let's clean this up a little bit. Uh, I don't want to get that all up in there. Oop. So there you go. And let's see if there's any near-term targets on this. Yeah, so it actually looks a little constructive near-term. This is their first break into overbought territory or first test of 70 uh, all night long. Um, or since the open of New York futures markets, I, I stand corrected, uh, on the near-term chart. So yeah, you could probably see a little bit of a push higher, but the... the you know, precedent here has got to be the push and close below uh, 72.90, bottom line. Um, but if we do get that rally into this region, I'd be looking for resistance. Uh, just on a real near-term approach, by the way, I'm over on time here, guys, so i got to run, but um, just because I am interested in getting involved on this one. Uh, if we do take that, I do want to see if that 50 comes in. Hmm, just higher. Uh, 38.2 is right there, 73.20. So let's see how this pans out uh, heading into the U.S. trade session, okay? And by the way, if we do get that rally on the way down, watch the median line because you got play off there already. Okay, so start to take some off, bring your stops down. Inevitably, you're looking for lateral uh, targets into 70, uh, 72.35, but you know, you're going to want to keep that slope in mind. Um, if it does hold, specifically if the 50 line does hold, that gives you more kind of conviction to use this slope. All right. Wrap it up there. Guys, we'll be back on board tomorrow morning. Same time, same channel. Uh, K, thanks. 7330s near term bearish invalidation. Beyond there, I'm deleting Kiwi charts, says Pooja. <laughs> I don't want to get that aggressive on it, but I, 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 I hear your frustration. And it's, it's funny, Pooja, because typically that's when we're capitulating. And when that's, that's when the market will actually start to move. So don't give up hope just yet. Mm, it's sort of like that Euro Oz uh, trade that we sat staring at for months uh, before that made a move. But Volatility will return. Uh, we have Kiwi uh, 
RBNZ interest rate decision on tap. Uh, and I promise you this thing will finally make a directional move at some point. Mike, you too. Have a good day. Guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Best of luck trading. Cheers.